Hello everyone, I'm Chris and I'd like it if you could all for a minute just please stand up. Yeah, wake up stuff. Um, you all had a big lunch, presumably, and sat through a nice long talk, and there's a temptation to fall asleep, and I don't want that to happen, because this is quite an interesting talk. So, we're going to do something very interesting here. Fold your arms across your chest, and space your feet out maybe a foot apart, or two, whatever. If you're bigger, maybe two feet or three feet. And every time I say a number, because I'm going to count here, you can turn to the right, because it's your left that I'm turning to, and the left and back to the front, okay? It's like a stretching thing. You've got to stretch as far as you can go. Because we're going to work this bit of your legs, and we're going to work this bit of you that's processing food, and we're going to wake up. Okay, three, two, one. One, two, we can do this a lot faster. Three, four, I bet you wish you hadn't come here. Five, <laughs> six, seven, eight. Okay, that's enough. Thank you, have a seat. Thank you for being here. Today I'm going to talk about asynchronous PHP. It would have blown the slide out if I had written the whole asynchronous, but just assume async means asynchronous. Before I do that, I want to thank a couple of people. First, I want to thank Silverstripe, who I work for in New Zealand, very far away. They give me the time to be able to do this talk and the inspiration often to do stuff like this, so I'd like to thank them for that. I'd also like to thank Zencon. Is anyone from the organization team of Zencon here? Okay. Well, I was going to give you a round of applause, but anyway. Thank you, ZenCon. I'm sure you'll agree with me. It's been an awesome conference so far, and I've enjoyed the talks I've been to. Okay, thanks aside. It's time for a story. If you've heard this story before, I apologize, but save the surprise at the end for people who haven't. A very long time ago, like Middle Ages we're talking here, in Central Europe, there was a little town, maybe two or three hundred people. And on the edge of this town, there was a large monastery. And in this monastery, there were, of course, monks or friars, whatever you want to call them. And they loved this town, and the town loved them. They loved spending time teaching the townsfolk how to read and write, how to use herbal medicines to heal, just generally hanging out with them. And to a lesser degree, they loved botany, or I guess just raising a garden full of flowers. Because in the middle of this monastery, there was a beautiful garden space. Mm. The townsfolk would come and hang there while they were learning to read or write, and kids would run around. And it was a beautiful place. These friars loved their plots. This didn't last forever, because after a while, under the semi-watchful eye of their mother, a little baby, maybe a boy or a girl, I can't remember exactly, maybe about three years old, was walking through the garden and walked straight past a sign they couldn't read, which said, keep out. These friars had planted some plants in this area of the garden that would eat bugs and stuff so that the rest of the garden plants would survive and be okay. And these plants did such a good job of eating bugs that it didn't need to be tended to. And that one of them grew particularly big. So as this toddler walked past this plant, it gobbled them up. And it was terrible. The townsfolk were horrified that this kind of thing could have happened under their watchful gaze, or perhaps not watchful gaze. And they wanted the monastery leveled. They wanted to level the garden, they wanted the monks gone. And these, these friars had a different kind of take on these things, on, on how relationships work with these things. They thought, or they knew, that when you have a problem in a relationship or a problem around you, you sort it out. You don't run away, you don't make someone else run away, you sort it out. So they said, we know this is terrible and we'll get rid of this carnivorous plant, but we don't want to leave. We, we love being around you and you need us as much as we need you. Townsfolk wouldn't have it. They got pitchforks and torches and tried to uh, chase these fries out. Ultimately, they couldn't because there were just big doors in the fries they put. Until one person in this town of these townsfolk, we'll call him Wilfred, remembered that there was a big blacksmith in town who wasn't there that day. So he went off to this blacksmithy and said to the blacksmith named Hugh, blacksmith, because you don't call a blacksmith Hugh, especially when he's big and can beat you into the ground. Blacksmith. We have this problem, we can't get the monks to go, but maybe you can. You don't have to do violence, just threaten it, and they'll probably be scared and leave. So off the blacksmith goes to the monastery, and the friars say, Hi, blacksmith, what do you want? And he says, You're going to leave. You're going to leave by morning, or I'm going to break the door down and make you leave. And the friars were terrified. They packed all their things, they were gone hours before they were supposed to be gone. They just left. 
And in the end, the townsfolk got to level the monastery and the garden and, and generally get on with their lives. But they learned a very, very valuable lesson that day. And that lesson is that Hugh, and only Hugh, can stop florist fries. <laughs> It'll come back to haunt me later, don't worry. <laughs> the purpose of this talk, the one thing I want you to take away from this, is that you can write asynchronous code. We're going to look at tools, not necessarily just in the language of PHP, but tools around it, extensions, frameworks, that kind of thing, that can help you write asynchronous code. And before we do that, we have two myths that we need to dispel, two myths we need to get rid of. Put your hands up if you've written a significant amount of JavaScript. I'm talking more than 100 lines, maybe with jQuery, or Ember, or React, or Angular, or just plain JavaScript. A fair amount of you. Okay. Put your hands up if the application that you work on a lot has external access. I'm assuming it's a PHP application, has access to the outside world, can connect to third-party services, can pull data from that. Okay. Thank you. Put your hands up if you work on an application or have access to PHP 5.5 or greater. Very good. Lastly, put your hands up if you are able to install extensions on this application yourself or if you have to call someone at support to install them. If you can get an extension that's not already there installed on the application, put your hand up. Okay, thank you. There are two myths that I want to, <coughs> two myths that I want to dispel today. The first is that you may be thinking you're not going to write asynchronous code because your language can't do it, 